So um, everyone, it's a great pleasure to have Professor Xiaogang Wen to joining us today, giving us a quantum matter seminar. Uh, so uh, Xiaogang is one of the first, um, thing, should I say, generation of uh, undergrads in China after um, Cultural Revolution. So he uh, joined Princeton uh, through this uh, Caspia exam initiated by T.D. Lee. Um, he got his PhD um, degree under supervision of uh, um, Ed Witten. And then Xiaogang was a postdoc fellow at ITP and uh, an IAS at Princeton before joining MIT as a faculty. So Xiaogang has made many uh, important contributions to our um, condensed matter field, uh, especially uh, he invented the concept of topological order. So in recent years has uh, been studying uh, the classification of uh, topological order um, with and with our symmetry. So um, recently he has been awarded Buckley Prize and uh, um, Dirac Medal for his contribution to this field. So um, today Xiaogang is going to give us a very um, gentle overview of this subject of topological order. So let's welcome Xiaogang. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, during pandemic, it's not easy to give a Zoom meeting, so the all, all over the world. <laughs> so today I'm going to uh, uh, discuss the physics aspect of topology order. Basically, it's a connection uh, to many body entanglement and its connection to fractionalization, uh, even the fractionalization of a degree of freedom. And also we'll discuss uh, a, a few simple cases where uh, it's possibly be realized by experiments. And uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm also going to uh, give another Zoom, meet, uh, Zoom seminar uh, uh, and, uh, in, in, in the same university and <laughs> virtually. And uh, which, uh, which is more about the mathematical aspect of uh, uh, topological order. Okay, and uh, so, so we know that uh, uh, we can as a matter study all kind of material, and uh, so those material can have a different phase. And we would like to have a, a general understanding of a phase because we have so many of them, and we want to see why we have so many phase, so many phase transition, uh, what uh, give right to those rich uh, set of phase of matter. And for a long time, we thought uh, this Landau center breaking theory is a, a cornerstone, uh, it's a fundamental uh, insight uh, to understand the phase. Uh, because Landau pointed out that the two system uh, can be in different phase because they may have a different symmetry. And, uh, and the phase transition is a change of a symmetry. So therefore, uh, according to Landau theory, uh, the phase of matter are uh, classified by this uh, a pair. A uh, one, one, uh, first one is uh, the symmetry group of the system of the Hamiltonian. The second one is a symmetry group of ground state. So the basic insight is that the ground state may have a lower symmetry than the Hamiltonian. And so this uh, so ground state group is a subgroup of a Hamiltonian uh, symmetry group. And this pair of group and subgroup really label all the different uh, symmetry breaking phase. And uh, for example, use this uh, uh, group theory, uh, we can classify there's 230 crystals uh, in three dimensional uh, space. However, uh, we always have a question whether symmetry is enough, whether symmetry indeed uh, can describe all possible phase of a matter. Okay. And uh, uh, in early uh, uh, 90s, uh, or maybe end of 80s, and uh, we, we studied the spin liquid uh, to, in, uh, in order to understand the high TC superconductivity. The idea is that the spin liquid has some special property called the spin charge separation. Basically, the spin line can become somehow separated to two quasi particles, whole long. Uh, the electron can become two quasi particle, holon and the spin line. Holon is a, a charge one, spin zero boson, and the spin line is charge zero, spin one half of fermion. And if this uh, spin charge separation indeed happens, then the holon condensation, which is a boson, uh, can, uh, can lead to superconductivity. And uh, since holon carry charge, so this is the one way, kind of very novel uh, mechanism. Uh, to uh, to understand uh, superconductivity, and uh, so so in the uh, uh, 
in early 90s and the 80s, 1980s, uh, there was a lot of study of uh, uh, spin liquid states. Okay. And uh, so spin liquid state is a liquid, so looks like does not break any symmetry because the spin orientation is a disorder. There's no symmetry breaking. So at the beginning, there's a, 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 a issue about uh, uh, whether this uh, uh, spin liquid is a, uh, 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 how to characterize a spin liquid. So, uh, so we find that uh, uh, in 1989, uh, we find that a spin liquid uh, can be characterized by other parameter, uh, which is a S1 dot S2 cross S3, that's a spin, uh, three spin vectors. And these uh, other parameter detect uh, parity and a time reversal symmetry, but uh, do not detect spin rotation symmetry. So we are still thinking in terms of Landau theory. And uh, then we find that, uh, yeah, there's spin liquid called the chiral spin liquid, which break time reversal and the parity, but not spin rotation. And this is a way to describe a spin liquid at that time. But however, uh, when we study spin liquid in more detail, we find there are several different uh, chiral spin liquid, which uh, have a same symmetry breaking, have exactly the same other parameter, they break same symmetry, but they're still different. So this, this suggests that, yeah, using symmetry breaking may have a problem. Maybe we, we need to look for another symmetry which is broken for those different spin liquid. Okay. And there's another uh, 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 example, that is quantum Hall states, uh, which is a two-dimensional electron gas at the interface super uh, semiconductor and the very strong magnetic field. And we find the Hall connectors are quantized at some very precise value. Those are plateaus here. Okay. And uh, again, we have a, a issue, how to characterize uh, different quantum Hall uh, states of different plateaus whether they have different symmetry breaking. Here, this quantum power sample is, uh, is pretty dirty. You know, have impurity in the break, all the symmetry except electron conservation, charge conservation symmetry. But even for dirty sample, this plateau are also very, very precisely quantized. Actually, the, the dirty sample have a better quantized plateau. So it's a, the phase became more well-defined. So it looks like quantum power states, except U1 symmetry, have no other symmetry. All different quantum power states have the same symmetry. And the U1 symmetry is not broken because they are not superconductor. If they're broken, they are superconductor. So we have a facing same issue. Different plateau have the same symmetry. There's no way to use symmetry to distinguish them. So, so therefore, uh, this led to this uh, uh, motivation a, a suggestion that uh, the chiral spin state and the quantum power states may have an additional order, new kind of order beyond the symmetry breaking. And this new kind of order is called a topological order. So what is a topological order? And uh, so uh, you may say that uh, we know that there's a three kind of uh, uh, liquid, a three kind of quantum matter. One is a trivial like an insulator, there's energy gap. That means at the low energy, there's nothing, no excitation. So that we call what we call the trivial. Another one is we call interesting, like a superfluid or crystal. Uh, there is a linear dispersion relation, phonon dispersion relation. So not, there's some low energy excitation, but not too many. The third kind is very complicated. It's called messy, uh, like metal. They have the Fermi surface. There's a lot of uh, low energy excitation, a lot of instability. So it's very messy, okay. So what is topology order? The topology order, like a quantum Hall state of cryo spin liquid, are belong to this trivial class. So there's no low line excitation, no low energy excitation. So basically topology order is really just a, a trivial state of matter. So, you know, at the beginning, indeed we thought, yeah, when system have a gap, it's kind of trivial. And uh, we don't need to study them, it's kind of trivial. But it turns out that the trivial state is actually not quite non-trivial. And, uh, but, uh, even though it's non-trivial, but it still belongs to the easiest state of matter because it have a energy gap. The gapless state of matter are more complicated. And uh, so maybe in the future, we want to study those uh, strongly correlated gapless states. That's maybe one of future direction. But in the last uh, 30 years, uh, I have been working on this uh, trivial class of state of matter. 
And it turns out that there's a lot of uh, interesting features there. Okay. Sorry, so, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. So for the, for the interesting family of states, is there a more rigorous um, criteria you can categorize them? Okay, yeah. And this is interesting, that's a very good question. So here the interesting, I mean, there is an emergence of Lorentz symmetry. But that's maybe too strong. In condensed matter, we say there's an emergence of linear dispersion relation. So, the, uh, so like a Dirac fermion, uh, Dirac semi-metal. You know, the Fermi liquid uh, is not a linear dispersion relation because uh, there's, there's, there's another, other direction is a, is a, is a, is a dispersion less. When you allow the Fermi surface, uh, the, the energy do not increase. Here, uh, the interesting really means that uh, the dispersion relation is Kron-like, so omega equal to absolute value of k. And so, so, so those states, the reason I've listed interesting really because uh, those gapless states matter may be simpler. The Fermi liquid is too messy, and uh, so that's uh, maybe untouchable. But this, the one with the linear dispersion relation, uh, we also can form a fuel theory. That may have a, a more structure. So probably it's, a, uh, it's a easier, or uh, maybe the first, uh, the, you know, the, the, we, we should try that first, try to understand those things systematically first. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually there are also like semi-metal that say linear dispersing in one direction, but quadratic in some other direction. Yeah, that's Would that belong to the, I think yeah, that's, that's messy. That's a, it's, a, it's a less messy <laughs> than from liquid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But quadratic yeah. dispersion relation is a, it's a more complicated than interesting, but the less complicated than messy. <laughs> okay. And uh, many yeah. of them may be a little bit unstable. So th those are interesting things, you know, and, uh, but the most uh, simplest uh, gapless states probably is the one with the linear dispersion relation. Yeah. That's a, uh, and uh, this may be, may, maybe there's some hope to develop a comprehensive theory uh, for that case. So for the gap states, you know, uh, how to uh, physically uh, define uh, topology order. So the point is that uh, in physics, every concept are defined by experiments. You know, for example, uh, the, the concept of Fermi statistics should be defined by experiments. So you may think which experiments define the concept of Fermi statistics. It's not like a, uh, the Fermi statistics defined via under commuting operator. That's mathematics, not experiment. And uh, so to define Fermi statistics, we need to really design experiments. Uh, similarly, to, de to define the concept of crystal order, uh, we have actually diffraction. And so those are actually diffraction peak really define the notion of a crystal order. Also the superfluid order are defined via this uh, zero viscosity, a quantization for uh, vorticity. So, so we, have, we are facing the issue we, without other parameter, how to define the notion of a topology order? Because a topology order really is a property of a many state the wave function, many body wave function. There is a wave function with a, a 10 to the 20 variables. So they are extremely complicated. We don't know what to do. But however, uh, one way to, uh, to proceed is uh, to put this many body wave function on, on space with different topology and the measure of ground state degeneracy, okay. Then we find that uh, uh, even though there's energy gap, but the below energy gap, uh, there's a little bit of dynamics, low energy dynamics in terms of ground state degeneracy. And the topological order is non-trivial because this dynamics of a ground state degeneracy is non-trivial. In a sense, uh, the ground state degeneracy depends on topology of a space. Like on the sphere, the degeneracy is one, and the torus is a D1, and the genus two, Riemann surface is D2, and etc. The so therefore, this is a sequence of integer uh, can be used as a data which uh, uh, define the notion of a topological order. You know, at the beginning, this way of uh, defining topology looks very strange. Usually, this uh, degeneracy depends on boundary condition. Like a uh, torus and a sphere, you can say it's the same system, but with different boundary condition. And uh, so the degeneracy, exact degeneracy depends on boundary condition. And since uh, it's just an artifact of a boundary, 
it's not an intrinsic property of the of the face. You know, at the beginning, that's a main concern. So, 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 so maybe this uh, degeneracy just says so unartified boundary condition is not reflecting the intrinsic order of a face. Okay. And then uh, uh, with uh, Niu Qian and uh, and we 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 studied this uh, uh, this degeneracy uh, in the presence of impurity. We find that uh, this uh, degeneracy actually is robust against the arbitrary uh, impurity, arbitrary local perturbation. So it's very robust. It's not coming from symmetry. It's not coming from any fine toning of the system. So this robustness against the any local perturbation really corresponds to this topological degeneracy. This degeneracy is not coming from symmetry, but coming from, we don't know, maybe topology. OK. So actually, at that time, we don't know what, 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 what's, what's happening. So we call them topology because they are robust against arbitrary perturbation. So that's where the topology is, uh, uh, is this name is introduced. So because it's robust against arbitrary perturbation, only when you have a large change of Hamiltonian, which close energy gap and phase transition, degeneracy can change. So therefore, in this sense, in this sense the degeneracy, although indeed a dependent boundary condition, but however, it is also a quantum number which you label different phase of matter because uh, they are they are environments uh, within the same phase. They can only change uh, under after phase transition. Okay. So, so this is just uh, uh, just say yeah we have this uh, property. Uh, we have this uh, macroscopic phenomena. So next question we like to ask. What is the origin and the mechanism of a topological degeneracy? Where do they come from? Why we have this phenomenon? So this is a, a rather uh, strange. Okay. So uh, so uh, so in two thousand five, uh, and uh, uh, there's a two paper appears, which shows that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, topological order and entangled entropy. Uh, have uh, some relation in a sense that uh, we know intense entropy uh, depend on the area law, you know, uh, uh, so, so the dependent area of a surface uh, separating uh, two parts of a system. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, there is a subleading term, which is a constant subleading term called a topological intense entropy, which is also robust against the uh, uh, arbitrary perturbation and arbitrary choice of a surface. And, uh, and this uh, is actually, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Subleading term is non-zero only when you have a non-trivial topology order. Okay, so this suggests that the topology order and entanglement are related. So that's made the first first sign that uh, yeah, the entanglement is a uh, uh, may play important rule. You know the the the, the topology order is introduced in 1989. At that time, that's before the age of quantum computing. So nobody talked about the entanglement and the qubits. And uh, but uh, after 1905. The field of quantum computer take off, and now people after that people thinking about entanglement, and it looks like the topology of the entanglement have very close relation. And to be more precise, uh, it turns out that this topology order actually is a part of a so-called long-range quantum entanglement. It's a many-body uh, entanglement. Okay, and this topology degeneracy actually coming from this uh, long-range entanglement. So this is our answer to this so-called mechanism of a topology order. You may ask why this entanglement and the degeneracy are related. Because entanglement have this very interesting feature. That is the whole is not equal to sum of all parts. You know, usually we say if you understand every part, if you know every part of the system, we should know the whole. But this is no longer true for the entangled system. If you, even if you know every part of the system, you still do not know whole. Okay. And uh, so, so because this is a special property, uh, that's how we understand the uh, entanglement. So for the quantum system, this whole means that uh, means the uh, the total uh, many-body uh, wave function. The whole means uh, the total many-body wave function. The part means. Uh, so-called local entanglement density matrix, okay. And the Hamiltonian is a local interaction, only, only see the local entanglement density matrix. So Hamiltonian only examine the parts. 
So if you have a two different wave function with the same local entanglement density matrix, then they would have the same energy because Hamiltonian only see these uh, uh, local entanglement density matrix. And uh, so, so that's what led to the uh, degeneracy. And uh, certainly you say, what is uh, this uh, local entanglement density matrix? What is the entanglement density matrix? So let me just give an example. Let's consider two spin, spin up, uh, two spin. Uh, and consider state is up, up plus down, down, or up, up minus down, down. So there are two different states. So we have a two different hole, okay. However, if you look at a single spin, if you just look at a single spin, ignore the second one, the single spin can be, first spin can be up, or first spin can be down with a 50% probability. Actually, if you trace out the second spin, so there is a way to just trace out, so we construct the density matrix of a pure states, that's a pure state of a whole wave function, and then trace out the second spin, and we obtain the two by two matrix describing density matrix of the first spin, that is entanglement density matrix, and uh, so that's a part. It turns out that these two different wave function have the same uh, entanglement density matrix for the first spin, and they're just diagonal. So 50% up, 50% down, and uh, no off diagonal term. So, uh, so this is an a, a example, a very important feature of entanglement, uh, that knowing every pass still do not still uh, uh, do not specify the whole. And it is this property that led to the uh, uh, topological uh, degeneracy. Okay, yeah, any question here? Uh, yeah, let me ask a question. So it sounds like you're referring to the fact that uh, trying to classify Hamiltonians, local Hamiltonians are different from trying to classify states. Uh, yes, uh, in a sense, uh, Okay, uh, yeah, I don't have how to specify that. Okay, when you try to classify topological order, we really try to classify uh, the class which have the same degeneracy. So maybe we have a two different Hamiltonian uh, which have the same degeneracy. Then we say, okay, these two Hamiltonian belong to the same class. Okay, uh, but however, uh, for the given Hamiltonian, why we have a two state with the same energy and this is because this Hamiltonian gave rise to ground state with certain pattern entanglement. And this pattern entanglement has this feature that knowing every pass still do not specify the whole. It is this feature led to this notion of topological order. And there are some other Hamiltonian whose ground state don't have this feature. And that ground state, if you know every pass, then you know the whole. And that Hamiltonian will not give rise to topology order, yeah. Uh, so this here, I'm describing there's a particular Hamiltonian which gave rise to a particular ground state whose entanglement have a very special feature. But how to understand this special feature is that uh, we say whether knowing parts, knowing every parts can specify the whole wave function or not. We're using this property to specify this very strange feature. And this strange feature actually is what we call topology order. Yeah, so this is a really the relation between topological order and entanglement. So if a history is a, have a different, suppose if you can yeah. can I ask another question? Please. So, I, are you ask are you making two distinctions here? One is, uh, you're ask, you're calling the whole to be a single wave function, and you are saying that there is some entanglement coded in that single wave function. Yes. But you also talked about the degeneracy, you know, the multifold degeneracy of the ground state. So yes. now this is a question about each degenerate state being described by a different wave function, right? Yes, that's right. That's even so, a whole. So that is another aspect of the whole, meaning yes. um, the number of states in the manifold of the degenerate. Uh, yes. But however, the things are, even if you, if you have, Suppose you have a single wave function, a single hole. Then you look at every part of it. Then you, you, you can still ask question whether all the parts can specify the whole wave function or not. Uh, that's correct to ask the following question. Do we have another wave function whose parts are identical? Okay. Yeah, that's really the question. 
do we have another wave function whose parts are identical to this wave function? Whose every parts are identical to this wave function? And this is the way to specify there's some special feature of a single, even when you have a single wave function, you can study there are some special features, some special entanglement. In a way that there is another wave function whose every single part is identical to this wave function. Then that means this wave function is very special. The single, every part cannot specify the total wave function. Uh, maybe um, what? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I have a question. So basically, uh, can I say that uh, like the Hamiltonian on different manifold will have different Hilbert space because you have different uh, ground state degeneracy on different no, manifolds? Uh, the ground state have a different Hilbert space, but the total Hilbert space can be the same. Because total Hilbert space just a number of sites. If a two manifold have the same number of sites, each site have say two states, then the total Hilbert space is the same. But the Hamiltonian select a ground state subspace. And uh, so this uh, ground state subspace is a subspace of a total Hilbert space. And uh, on different manifold, the Hamiltonian select different subspace. Sometimes they select one dimensional subspace that we no degeneracy, um, but on other manifold is select say three dimensional uh, uh, manifold or uh, subspace, uh, which is a uh, uh, three four degeneracy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and this uh, degeneracy really says that uh, uh, knowing every part, we still cannot specify the whole. And there is a three wave function which share the same local parts but as a whole, they are the different. So this is really the uh, uh, new point of view of a topological order. It's really because uh, when we introduce this concept, the notion of entanglement is not very popular. I think I don't know entanglement at the time. And, uh, but if, uh, uh, if you know, if quantum computing is developed earlier, then maybe you should topology order uh, entanglement order or something like that. So it's really the pattern for uh, many body entanglement. Uh, sorry, Xiaogang, there is a question in the chat. So someone asked, what is the large gauge transformation to show topological degeneracy? Okay, yeah, this is uh, something uh, I try to hide. At the beginning, we don't have this uh, understanding for entanglement. We don't know the parts and the whole. Why understand every part still don't give us whole. So then how do we show there's a topological degeneracy? Then we, we go through a long detour. Uh, we have a Hamiltonian system, we have a, a low energy factor field theory, this is factor field theory turns out to be a gauge theory. And in the gauge theory, there's a so-called large gauge transformation, which is a, locally looks like a gauge transformation, so it means uh, indistinguishable, but globally are distinct. Uh, so actually, so at that time, we understand the topological degeneracy using this trick of a large gauge transformation in gauge field theory. So that's a trick. It's not physics, and uh, it's just a trick of formality. And uh, uh, so after 20 years, uh, now we have a more physical way to understand this uh, uh, origin of a uh, uh, topological degeneracy, really in terms of quantum entanglement. So this also reflects that uh, actually the emergent gate theory is the same thing as the emergent entanglement. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feature of a gate theory. It's really because our ground state have entanglement. So their low energy fact theory would naturally be a gate theory. So that's why we understand why certain system, the low energy fact theory is a gate theory. Well, as some other system, it's not gate theory. I mean, dynamical gate theory. And it's really, uh, again, have origin, emerging for gate theory, have emer origin in the uh, many body entanglement. So very similar thing. Okay, so let's uh, try to give some uh, very simple introduction of uh, many body entanglement. Let's get a two spin. Certainly, this up and down, this is the product states, okay? And this up and down plus down up, uh, that's entangled states. That's a typical entangled states. Uh, when we say, okay, let's try to get a more entangled state, like up, up, plus down, 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 up, up, or down. All that together, that seems the more superposition, more entangled. But this one actually is unentangled because uh, this can be written as uh, the upper plus down uh, tensor product with upper plus down. So basically it's a two spin x direction tensor product. And uh, so it's unentangled. So actually entanglement is pretty tricky actually. Uh, superposition sometimes can give you entanglement, sometimes don't. 
But however, in condensed matter, like we have antiferon mag magnets, like up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. They are really unentangled many body states. There are many bodies are unentangled. And this dimer state is an example of entangled many body states. Uh, you know, for neighboring spin, we have a up, down, minus, down, up. And that's give a spin singular dimer. And uh, we have a tensor product, all those dimers, that's, a, uh, that's entangled many body states. But this example is not so interesting because uh, they are shorter entangled because if you group two sides together, they are unentangled dimers. Okay. So therefore, this really gives an example of a short ring entangled states. So somehow on each side they are entangled, but at the at the long long distance, it can be viewed as a product states. Okay. So topological other states have this special many body entanglement we call long ring entanglement. So what is the long ring entanglement? I can say, oh, it's, it does not look like this. But what it is? So there's a there's an issue. What is it? What is it? A long long ring entanglement. So so the way uh, to understand the long ring entanglement is uh, uh, using this notion of a short ring entanglement. Basically, that basically says that the short ring entangled states is very similar to product state. But what what do you mean by similar to product states? How to make that precise? What similar means? So here, similar means that. Uh, uh, these two states are related by so-called local unitary uh, uh, transformation. So each box is a unitary tr transformation. The leg is a degree freedom. So this box act on four legs, means this box, this unitary tr transformation act on four sides. So they can scramble the degree freedom on those four sides. Okay. If you start with the product states, you only have this local scramble, scrambling, and uh, maybe a few layers. Then the state you produce is still shortening entangled. It's called a pro still similar to product states. It's like an example. If you apply the unitary matrix up on these uh, uh, two sides, we can change the spin singlet to this up, up, up times down, just to a rotation. And then make this state totally unentangled, product states. Okay. So therefore, uh, the, the, the shorter entanglement it's a state which can be produced from product state using this local unitary transformation. In a sense, this local unitary transformation is also equivalence relation, means these two states are similar, means they are in the same phase. Okay. So local unitary transformation also de define the phase of a gap that matter. If two gap states are related by local unitary transformation, means they can deform into each other without a closing energy gap, without phase transition, and these two gap state will belong to the same phase. Okay, so shorter entangled states belong to the same phase as the product states, so they are trivial phase. Then the longer entangled states, just uh, the states which are not not in this uh, uh, not not of this kind, so something different. So it's called the longer entangled states. So so therefore, uh, the longer entangled states are, are some states which are which are not in the same class as the product states via this uh, uh, equivalence relation defined by local unitary transformation. So that is a, uh, that is a, 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 a concept of longer entanglement. And uh, the, the, the shorter entangled states are always connected by local uni unitary transformation, so they always belong to the same uh, phase. But however, first, there exist longer entangled states, which are not connected by product state via local unitary transformation. So this means, means that there exists topology order. The topology order means that exists some kind of different state which are not connect to product state via local unitary. Not only there exists long range entangled state, there are many of them, because although the short range entangled state are all connect to each other by these local unitaries, but the long range entangled state may not. Actually, they, indeed, they do not. So there are different long ring time state, they are not connected by local unitary transformation, so they belong to a different phase. That's a different topology order. Or we can say that's different pattern of long ring entanglement. So therefore, the topology order are really just a pattern of long ring entanglement. Each pattern is the equivalent class of this local unitary transformation, and that is a, a, 
in tandem understanding of a topological order. Uh, uh, Shogun, yes. I have a question. Hi, this yes. is Ilya. Uh, so, um, so this this description somehow implicitly, maybe, well, uses the fact that you write your states in a discrete basis. Is it somehow important or not? I mean, I'm very, thinking very about important. quantum yeah. pulse states, for example. I mean, this this is not <laughs> it's not local, right? I mean, yeah, this is this is very very important. So because we talk in entanglement, so you assume our Hilbert space have this tensor product decomposition. There is a every site we have a small Hilbert space. The tensor product of those small Hilbert space on the site give us a total Hilbert space, and then we can divide the system into subsystem uh, parts and uh, define top order in this way. So for quantum power state, uh, we will see the space are continuous. But here we have to assume the space with discretized space to make this accurate. Otherwise, the many body Hilbert space would have infinite dimensional, and there's, a, there's an issue here. And also in field, quantum field theory, the quantum field theory may not have this uh, uh, lattice regulation. And uh, so in this case, uh, a quantum field theory uh, to consider uh, entangled entropy and things like that in quantum field theory would be tricky. Yeah, I, I cannot, I, will, I do not say it's impossible, but it's very tricky. If you have a lattice regulation of a quantum field theory, then it's uh, much easier, it became well defined. So here I assume everything is on the lattice, so everything's well defined. Uh, uh, so, so, so this is a uh, this is very, very good question because there are some quantum field theory who have obstruction to have a lattice regulation. <laughs> And those quantum field theory will be, really have some very interesting or weird behaviors. Yeah, but that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Oh, sorry, so, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so you are saying that uh, for finite depths, quantum circuit, uh, you cannot connect uh, one state to the other, but what if you have an infinite like depths quantum circuit, can you do that? Yeah, uh, this is a very good question also. Uh, I try to hide those subtleties. <laughs> You know, here we consider a thermodynamic limit. Okay, the system size go to infinity. And the depth of quantum circuit can also be very large. So there's two limits. Uh, which, which, uh, which, which limit are taken first or not is very different. But here we take a system size go to infinity first. Then the depth of circuit go to infinity second. Then that's led to different uh, long range entanglement. If you let the depth of quantum circuit go to infinity the first, and the season size go to infinity the second, then everything are connected by the quantum circuit. So there's only one phase. <laughs> Again, it's a very, very good question. And so, so therefore, you can see this definition is a kind of hand-waving definition. And uh, to make it really rigorous, as in terms of mathematics or mathematical physics, there's a lot of work need to be done. So here is just an outline, and we still, don't have a very rigorous definition. So this definition of class that really makes sense. We don't have a proof of that. And this is a, a very hard problem, yeah. But again, very, very good question, yes. Okay, thank you. So, so here I want to compare this entanglement understanding of a top, uh, topology order with a superconductivity. We know that uh, the, the superconductivity is uh, characterized by zero resistivity and uh, quantized the uh, vorticity or quantized flux. And uh, the, that's a microscopic description. The microscopic origin or the mechanism is a, a electron uh, pairing, okay. And uh, similarly, uh, the microscopic calculation of topology order are really like a Gronsky degeneracy, okay. And there's other thing, mapping classical reputation, which I will not talk about here. And the microscopic origin actually is a long entanglement we just uh, talked about. So therefore, this long range entanglement is a, is a mechanism, just like a electron pairing, it's a mechanism, but for topology order, okay. And the, but, but certainly electron pairing is a, is a much, looks more concrete. The long range entanglement is less concrete, and, uh, but in some sense they're similar, it means that uh, to looking for topology order, we want to design the Hamiltonian, design the interaction, which cause long range entanglement. Just like to have superconductivity, we want to design Hamiltonian, which causes electron pairing. Yeah. So, so in this sense, uh, there is some uh, similarity. So long range entanglement is a microscopic origin of a topological order. And this is a degeneracy, and it's a macroscopic 
a definition or characterization of a topological order. Okay, here I want to remark that uh, the topological insulator and the topological order is uh, really different. This uh, right now the topology is a very popular word. You know, everything is called a topological. Okay, but uh, the topological in topological insulator and topological in topological order are really very different thing. It's totally different thing. The topology in topological insulator really means that uh, 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 the topology in band structure, you can see in the band structure, we only describe band structure by dispersion relation. But however, uh, every energy also has energy eigenvector. The energy eigenvector can twist around as we change momentum. And this twisting around uh, energy eigenvector uh, is, a, is a topology in the topological uh, insulator, okay. And uh, so this relates to this uh, uh, orange and the donuts is kind of, we call this a classical uh, topology, okay. But however, the topology in topology order is totally different thing. As I mentioned that the, the, the topology in topology really corresponds to pattern for many body entanglement. It's not a donut or orange, you know. It's very hard to draw, you know, how to visualize this many body entanglement, different many body entanglement, what, what is that, okay. So I, I had to download some picture from internet. So this is the, maybe the picture for the entanglement. <laughs> Other day I can use the, 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 the Celtic knots, and a Celtic knots, or maybe this, uh, this knot picture. And this maybe uh, have, uh, give you some feeling uh, what a pattern entanglement looks like. So the topological order really corresponds to this kind of a, a, a pattern. So we may call this a quantum topology. So it's a very different uh, uh, topology. So the understanding is, uh, is, uh, is uh, quite different. So we need a, a different mathematics uh, to understand uh, the, uh, this uh, pattern entanglement. And tomorrow I will uh, discuss this, uh, some of this, I try to argue that uh, uh, the mathematical foundation of a topology order is not orange and a donuts, and uh, it's not a fiber bundle, but actually it's a, it's a tensor category theory. So that's a, it's a different kind of, uh, 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 mathematics. Okay. So, oh, so I can ask a quick question about this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you are saying this topology, but what kind of space is this topology lives in? Like uh, previous one, no. uh, you have momentum space. Uh, no, this is a topological. To top, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. You can see, we think a topology in topology insulator. This topology are really fiber bundle. Fiber bundle in Boolean zone. Boolean zone is a momentum space. It have a dimension, same dimension as a space dimension. Okay. But this topology totally thing is not related to manifold. So, so that's maybe wrong name as I just mentioned. Maybe I should not call this topology order. I should call that entanglement order. Have nothing to do with a manifold. So no dimension. But it's related to the category theory. But however, the topology order in different dimension are associated with a different category theory. There's a one category theory, it's one dimensional topology order, two category theory for two dimensional topology order, and three category theory for three topology, three dimensional, three D topology order, and etc. So there's a, there's a different version of category theory described the topology order in different dimension. And uh, so this really became a very uh, mathematical uh, topic. But it's uh, amazing that uh, this, uh, the entanglement are truly a new phenomenon. And uh, this new phenomenon, it's kind of like, a, the, when, found, when we want to describe a curve of the motion, we need to invent a uh, calculus to describe a curve of the motion, like in Newton's theory. And uh, when we want to describe the, the Maxwell equation, we need to introduce the fiber bundle to describe a gauge theory. But the topological order, or maybe many body entanglement, is something very new. And uh, this, uh, this new pattern, new things uh, require new mathematics. And this new mathematics appear to be the uh, uh, tensor category theory. It's just like a symmetry are described group theory. Entanglement are described by a category theory. So that is uh, uh, so, so, but, but the calling whole thing as a topology is a little bit tricky. But indeed, uh, people do use tensor category theory to study algebraic topology. So, it's, so in mathematics, actually, there's a similar uh, relation. The category theory and the topology are related. 
But I want to really emphasize this is a very different kind of topology. So not like uh, the topology associated with the manifold. So that's why what do I mean by quantum topology? It means it's not a manifold, not topological space, but something else. Yeah. But there's something else really entanglement in physics. In math, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just yeah. one quick question related to that. Um, can we also think about, uh, say, if I restrict myself to um, states which have finite range correlation, uh, I should say short range correlation. Yes. Uh, and then I, I look at, say, zero's homotopy group of that space, uh, where I define equivalence relation using finite depth circuit. Uh, what, you know, I don't know whether that will lead to any yeah, result. You know, for state with a short range correlation, this, uh, this uh, finite depth circuit really give us topology order. You know, the topology order uh, we call an have energy gap, but energy gap being short range correlated for any operator. Yeah. All the correlation are short range, so it's kind of trivial. But even right. these trivial states, it's not product state. This is a surprising. Usually we say something trivial, just a product states, all spin up, that's a product states. But however, there are certain special trivial states with a short range correlation on everything. But even that is still not, not the same as the product states. So there's still some hidden long range things. Yeah, it's very hard to, uh, to, 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 to realize what is a hidden long range thing. There's still some hidden long range thing which can detect topology of space. So the sphere and the torus, the wave function are different, uh, behave differently, even though all the correlation functions are short ranged. They still know mm -hmm. the whole space. So this is a surprise. Right. Actually, people will really thought when your state have a short range correlation, they cannot see the whole space. So ground state DNSA should not depend on topology of space. So it should be all the same. But the surprising thing is that even for short range correlated states, the ground state DNSA still depend on topology space. There's still something hidden, but not in terms of correlation function. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was thinking more like, a, a, imagine I know this space of all possible uh, states with short range correlation in the Hilbert space. That's, okay, this yeah, is yeah. a topological space. And yeah, then yeah. I can study, say, homotopy theory with that space where I define oh, some yeah, equivalence yeah, relation yeah, yeah. as exactly. finite circuit. Yeah, pi well, zero. Of course, that space is very complicated. Yeah, very complicated. Yeah, yeah. pi zero of that sp space is this, uh, is this topological, yeah. topological, topological pi zero right. of this class of uh, Hamiltonian class of states. And uh, actually, the there's a pi one, pi two, which are also very interesting. So let me not talk about that here. Yeah. And uh, so, so those are some pretty abstract uh, description. And uh, so let's give some concrete. So what is the what is the example of a long range entangled states? We already say that if you have a up and down, then we have a product states, which has a product states. So we have to make a superposition. However, if it sum of all spin configuration we'll get a state where spin in x direction. That's also product states. So therefore, the key, the key point is that uh, to, to find the uh, a configuration where we don't sum over all spin configuration, we only sum over sub configuration. For example, we also consider the spin up as a reference states. And the spin down, we assume spin down form a string. Okay. Then there's a sub configuration are those a closed loop of spin downs. We sum over all closed loop of spin down. And this we do the partial sum. And this we call the loop liquid, string liquid. Okay. We can get another string liquid by changing sign here. This a number loop is even loop. We have a minus, a plus sign. Out loop, we have a minus sign. So you can construct this two loop liquid, two different wave function or two whole. Okay. So those are, uh, those are example of a long range entangled states. So I will show that these are really long range entangled states. And you may say, well, these long range entangled states is a mathematical toys, you know, have a Hamiltonian realizing this a string liquid of spin down looks very artificial, you know, not real, okay. But actually this string liquid is a quite real. You know, let's consider the Kagem lattice like this. And we have a spin one half on every side. Then with anti-ferromagnetic interaction, the, the neighboring spin want to form a singlet dimer. So this bar is a singlet dimer. But however, the real ground states is like RB states. 
uh, resonance valence bound states. Uh, maybe a superposition of this singular dimer. So this red is a one pattern, blue is another pattern. The superposition of all those patterns give you true ground states. But however, when you compare these two patterns, they lay, lay one on top of each other. Then we find this red, blue, red, blue form a strings. Okay. So the difference of two uh, uh, dimer pattern is a, is a string. So when you consider a fluctuation of a dimer pattern relative to a fixed pattern, you can use this, this is like a fluctuation of strings. Okay. So therefore, uh, actually this, uh, this liquid state of dimers and the string states, string liquid are very closely related. And uh, so actually that's why uh, the, that's a motivation to start, really study this uh, uh, string liquid. Okay. So, uh, so there's a one question is that uh, whether these two wave function uh, are really legal or not. Whether they're legal or not really depend on, uh, can we describe uh, this wave function locally? And uh, if those uh, patterns, if this wave function can be described locally, then we can design the Hamiltonian, local Hamiltonian to realize those wave function as a ground state. Um, so I can uh, ask a quick question before that. Yes. Uh, so usually if we have a cat state, it's very unstable under local perturbation. So why you can have this like large superposition and without collapsing to one of those states? No, that's required to design Hamiltonian. So we can design Hamiltonian to make this superposition, uh, this, not, not the two state, the superposition all, all liquid. And this superposition all liquid, uh, the, we can design the Hamiltonian to make this uh, superposition all liquid. Uh, uh, ground states. And this uh, Hamiltonian actually is a, a committing projector Hamiltonian. So, so everything is exact soluble. But I will not describe in, uh, this detail Hamiltonian. I just described some uh, picture. Yeah. So this, uh, this Hamiltonian is really a dancing rule. We can say this, uh, this string liquid just spin are dancing around. But the dancing, the, 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 the dance follow rule. That is the dance spin from a string, but string can deform without breaking. So therefore the wave function of a different shape of a string uh, have, are equal. So those are local, uh, uh, local relation. And we can design Hamiltonian to implement this local relation. So this kind of wave function has set for this relation have low energy, okay. You can design projector Hamiltonian to, to implement this relation. Then there's another relation that the string can break and reconnect. And then the wave function through reconnection is have same amplitude. Again, we can, there are local relations we can design local Hamiltonian to implement this relation. So therefore we can design the local Hamiltonian such that uh, uh, wave function such that these two relations is a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a ground state. So those are like a local density matrix and the local relation uh, which the Hamiltonian specify these uh, local relations, okay. It turns out that these two local relations is enough to say that because if you're using these two local relation, you can deform any string configuration to any other string configuration. So all those configurations have the same amplitude. So the wave function is a constant uh, for all the closed loop configuration. The wave function is zero when you have open amp. So this is, uh, uh, this is the way well, we can really design Hamiltonian, uh, which realizes this kind of uh, uh, wave function. Okay. And, uh, and there's a, another wave function, which is uh, uh, the wave function uh, changing change signs, depend on whether you have even number loop or number loop. Originally you may thought, oh, this relation is non-local because to count a number loop, you have to follow the loop all the way through the loop. That's a very non-local uh, operation. And uh, so, but however, if, you, if there are dependence on loop only via this sign, then it's local. Because uh, the, the local relation is still that the string can change in shape without changing wave function. But the string reconnection will causing a sign change. So actually from this graph, you can see that in two dimension, every time the string reconnect, like in this case, we make another additional loops. So loop may change by one, either increase by one or decrease by one. So therefore, this kind of local rule uh, uh, we'll specify uh, this kind of global uh, wave function, okay. 
So therefore, this wave function is also legal, like can be uh, can exist. But however, in three dimensions, like in, this is a loop in three dimension space, then this local recognition do not change the number of loops. Okay, just a just a loop because we have a lot of overcrossing. So therefore, uh, this kind of a, a wave function is illegal. Uh, we do not we do not have a local Hamiltonian to realize this wave function uh, for in three dimension. Uh, only in two dimension. This is only realizable in two dimension. But the first wave function, which a phase does not change the sign, can exist in both two and three or even higher dimension. So those are example of uh, of uh, entangled states. Okay. So so why they have this uh, 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 they, why these two states are uh, uh, have a degeneracy, uh, uh, have a long entanglement, because I can show that these two states have a topological degeneracy. So on the torus, okay, on the torus, uh, these loop liquid have four sectors, because when you, when, you, when, you, when you cut a line, like in x direction, you can count how many times the string cross this line. Here we have a four times, that's even, and in y direction, that's also uh, uh, even, so that's even, even sector. But here we have a, a odd even sector and odd other sector. So we have a four sectors where a string wrap around the whole torus uh, even number of times, odd number of times. But however, locally, when you look at a small local region for large torus, when you look at a small local region, you just see uh, you have a loop liquid. The locally, they have same relation. They all look the same. You don't see you don't know whether loop wrap around the system or not or not. So this uh, this uh, four sector is a uh, four different hole, but uh, the every path looks the same. So that's why we have a degeneracy, and these uh, these uh, four these uh, four states really give right to the uh, that's really topological degeneracy, and uh, so these are uh, two string liquid we studied uh, really have a topological order because they have this property that uh, knowing every path you still don't know hole. But however, there's an issue. We have a two string liquid. But how to distinguish them? Whether this two string liquid, one with a sign change or another without sign change, uh, do they belong to the same topology order? Do they have the same topology order or not? And one way uh, to, to understand that is to consider, uh, to distinguish them, is to consider topological excitation. So basically, we consider the end of a string. We allow string to end. If a string have ends, then this end cause energy. So like a particle excitation. You know the, the whole string is a spin flip. So the whole string together, if you think, think a whole string as a particle, this whole string is a boson, it's just spin flip. But each string have a two end. If you view this as one string as a two point particle, then this two point particle can be boson or fermion, because two fermions together is also a boson. So it's possible that uh, the single end of string look, looks like all local energy, look like a quasi particle, but their statistic is not so certain. Seems the fermion also consistent. And the boson is consistent, fermion also consistent. So how to determine whether end of string carry boson statistics or fermion statistics? Okay. And uh, so, uh, so one way uh, to, to understand that is to consider the angular momentum for end of string. Okay. So to consider angular momentum for end of string, uh, we just do the 360 degree rotation. Then we change the straight end into this hooked, this hooked end. Okay. And the sign, then we can, but however, this hooked end and the straight end belong to two different sectors. Through this local fluctuation and reconnection, we can only change the right hook to left hook, but we can never change the hook to straight. So, so to change the hook to straight, we have to do another 360 rotation, 360 rotation. And so then, then we can, using string reconnection, we can change the right hook to left hook by connecting string in this neck here. And then you do another 360 rotation to change it to straight. So therefore, under 360 rotation, uh, we have we get a two by two matrix, which is changing from straight sector to hooked sector and the back. 
So therefore, this uh, three six rotation is non-trivial repetition. It's uh, given by this uh, two by two matrix, and these two by two matrix have two eigenvalue plus one and minus one. So this uh, straight plus hooked have eigenvalue one. So it has spin zero because under three six rotation is eigenvalue one. This straight minus hook have eigenvalue minus one for three six rotation has spin one half. So something you find uh, again something surprising. That is a uh, once you have a string liquid, the under string carry fractional angular momentum. So that's the angular momentum fractionalization right here. Yeah. And then we can understand the angular momentum fractionalization imply Fermi statistics. Okay. Because uh, uh, exchanging two straight end like this, okay, we exchange two straight end. Again, again, when you do exchange, we be careful that the string always uh, Go out of particle from down, downwards, you know, always going downward. And so we exchange like this, okay. And then using this uh, string reconnection, we change to this. Another string reconnection, we change to this. And this configuration is a one hooked string. And we need to have a three stage rotation for one particle to get a two straight, go, 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 go back here. So we see that exchanging two string n and the three six rotation of one string n are equivalent. So therefore, uh, so this really say that uh, exchanging two string also gave us a minor sign if you have uh, uh, this uh, uh, angular momentum one half particle. And so those are uh, fermion, okay. So here we really using the cartoon picture to show that uh, there is a spin statistics theorem, okay. And uh, using the other string liquid, because of the reconnection changing sign. So here in the 360 rotation, in this step of changing right hook to left hook, we have extra minus sign. So therefore two by two matrix now have an extra minus sign here. That change the eigenvalue of this 360 rotation to i and the minus i. So therefore the angular momentum became a quarter or minus a quarter. And then those, uh, those are fraction angular momentum would give rise to this uh, uh, Sanmian. The statistics between Fermion and the boson because Angnamtium is a quarter. So therefore, uh, this uh, two string liquid have a two topology order. And the one we have uh, emerged in the Fermion, the another we have uh, emerged in the Sanmian. So this is, uh, 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 this is uh, 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 some basic understanding uh, uh, why this entanglement uh, can lie to this uh, uh, fractional statistics and the fractional uh, quantum number. So this is uh, 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 this is basically uh, the 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 main essence of topology order. And uh, so go back to this high uh, T superconductor because this uh, emergent quasi particle uh, may carry uh, uh, fractional statistics. For example, uh, if you already know sigma formed by uh, by by fermions then their quasi particle may be a bosonic uh, charged bosonic particle. And this charged bosonic particle uh, may condense and may give rise to superconductivity. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think I'm uh, kind of five minutes uh, over. Uh, I, I can stop here. And uh, uh, so uh, the, certainly there's uh, other things I prepared, uh, but uh, I can stop here. So that's basically some very basic uh, understanding of uh, of uh, of uh, of top large order, yeah. Um, thank you, Xiao Gang. So yeah. actually, uh, just uh, uh, maybe before we take questions, I want to make an announcement. Xiao Gang already mentioned that he's giving a math seminar uh, tomorrow, three to four p.m. Um, and I'm gonna send a link to the uh, email list later. Uh, and Xiao Gang, if you're okay, can I also share your slides to everyone? Yeah, I can. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, so let me maybe start from two questions in the chat. Yeah. So there's one question um, from Jing Yang asking, uh, when you put the gap Hamiltonian on a manifold, do you also need to discretize the manifold to find the ground state degeneracy? Yes. So, so actually, this, uh, uh, we, we triangulate the manifold. So basically, so this Hamiltonian defined on the lattice, so defined on the triangulation of a manifold. So therefore, when we study topology manifold, uh, uh, though the manifold always are triangulated. And so there's a discrete version of a manifold. And uh, certainly uh, when you have discrete version manifold, you really have a graph. You don't really have a manifold. 
And so therefore, the topology manifold are really, this topological property are really emerging from this uh, graph, from this discrete graph. And uh, so, so, there's a, so there's a really a notion of a continuity is uh, emerging from lattice. And uh, so there's some flare of quantum gravity here, really because of this, uh, the topology continuity, those notion of a manifold uh, actually can emerge from this uh, discrete lattice Hamiltonian. And uh, uh, so that's quite amazing, yeah. Um, there is another question from Saad Khalid uh, asking, is there a physical motivation for using local unitary transformation for differentiating between short range entanglement and long range entanglement phases? Yeah, the, the, the reason is falling. You know, when you consider phase of matter in kinetic matter physics, we consider local Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian with the short range interactions, okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, so then we, we then we say uh, for the Hamiltonian with short range interaction, what kind of phase it can give rise, and because we consider short range interaction, so then using uh, therefore the phase of a short range interacting Hamiltonian are classified by this uh, local unitary, because the short range interaction the time evolution generated by short range Hamiltonian are really this uh, local unitary transformation. So therefore, this local unit transformation are directly related to the short range uh, Hamiltonian, short range interaction. It's a relation is that the time evolution generated by short range interacting Hamiltonian equal to local unit transformation. And this is a very interesting uh, question because uh, suppose you want to classify Hamiltonian with a long range interaction. Okay, you don't assume it's local. Then the, to, to study phase of matter for long range interacting Hamiltonian, then you should consider so called non local unit transformation. <laughs> the non local unit transformation, I believe, also have a class. And uh, 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 this class maybe relate to more to the quantum computation class, like uh, there's a polynomial class and exponential class in the compute, uh, complexity of computation. So, so this uh, phase of matter classified by long-range interacting Hamiltonian probably related to this uh, uh, comp computing complexity uh, question, yeah. Um, okay, there is one more question from an experimentalist uh, student, uh, Brandy Wooten. Can you say a little more about experiments that would go along with these fractional things? Yeah, okay, this is what I'm not talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe let me just uh, uh, do this. Okay, so how to realize topology order in experiments? You know, I just uh, describe a toy model to realize topology order, but that's not experiments. Okay, to have experiments, uh, let's consider uh, one third the Laughlin states. Okay, one third Laughlin state is that uh, we partially fill the first lambda level. The first lambda level is partially filled, and that's not. The, you know, if a partial field goes first along the level, there's a lot of dependency. You don't have unique ground state. But however, if you add a repulsive interaction, then you can pick among those highly degenerate ground state, you can pick a particular wave function. It's basically, it's a, this a, a Jastro wave function. Uh, this a, this a, this a Jastro wave function, but with a exponent three here. If you, raise, if you make an exponent of three, Exponent three here, that's a one third Laughlin state. So we call this uh, the third power of chi one is a, is a Laughlin state. Chi one is a wave function where field the first along the level. The wave function for field the first along the level is chi one. The third power gave you one third Laughlin states. Okay. So that's a Laughlin one third states can be obtained this way. Actually, using very similar uh, idea, we can construct more states. Let's assume the first two lambda level are filled. Okay. The first two lambda level are filled. And uh, then we, we partially fill first two lambda level. And then it turns out that we can construct another wave function with a partially filled first two lambda level. That is a chi one square times chi two, because this chi one, chi two are fermion wave function. So when two particles getting close together, those wave functions have first order zero. So chi one cube have a third of the zero in the wave function, so they are favored by short range interaction. This chi one squared chi two also have a third of the zero. They are also favored by repulsive interaction. 
But those wave functions are really live in the first two lambda level. So if the first two lambda level are degenerate, this will be very good wave function, very stable wave function. And that is a hierarchy of quantum power state, feeling function two space. If the first three lambda level are degenerate, you can do the similar game, chi one times chi two square. Again, have a third order zero favored by interaction, but partially filled first three lambda level. Those, this wave function actually have a non-abelian statistics, have a so-called S2 level two non-abelian statistics. If the first four lambda level degenerate, then we have a chi two cube leaving the first four lambda level. Again, have a third order zero. Those have a SU2 level, SU3 level two non-abelian statistics. So those are, and uh, those are kind of very interesting uh, topology order with a non-abelian statistics, which I did not discuss here. And uh, something really, really uh, interesting, uh, much more than quantum power states. And uh, so these non-abelian statistics uh, can help us uh, to do topological quantum computation. And uh, uh, so, so, so therefore experimentally, uh, that's a one direction. It's a very, uh, uh, you know, we very much like to have a material where the first few lambda level are degenerate. Then in those material with a strong cooling interaction, we naturally have a quantum power state as stable as the one third Laughlin states. But those new quantum power states may have a new topology order, even non abelian topology order uh, in, in the later two cases. So this is really a, a very, very interesting case. So, so, so this may be as much of one very interesting direction, like in the graphene or bilayer graphene or something, whether one can engineer this case, or maybe in some flat band material, and one can engineer this situation. Yeah, th those are really uh, more experimental related direction. Unfortunately, I don't have, have time uh, to cover here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we already asked many questions. Mm. Do we still have other questions for Xiaogang? Um, okay, if not, let's uh, thank the speaker again for this uh, great talk. Yeah, thank you.